Hello ladies and gents, welcome. Today I'm going to turn this laburnum. I'm very excited to turn this because um, this wood is actually a bit wet and um, if you know me from past videos I usually don't like turning uh, green uh, logs uh, but with this one I couldn't I couldn't really wait two years or so thing is because I've got a uh, this is part of a bigger log I've got the rest of it uh, drying so we're gonna turn this one wet today although the outer part seems to be a bit more dry if you can tell from the video inner part is um, a bit darker that's the sign of the wetness but it's not too much and this side I got the face blade but you can see the spider web cracking but this will be the inside of the bowl so that's why I chose this side to be the inside the top and that side the bottom so let's turn this and with this I'm gonna use my hook tool yeah I'm determined to, to use that but at least this is more uniform grain you know the last video I've done we were I was having a hard time um, using the hook tool because it, there was like a couple of uh, crutches in there anyway oh also gonna give a shout out to Ara uh, I know you're watching uh, I know you like to do wood turning I hope this inspires you to uh, start your own at some point um, it's very fun and uh, you'll enjoy it let's start with this uh, turning it's very heavy locked as well there we go When it, when it's when it's heavy logs, you know. Someone asked me on on past videos, my old videos. What speed do you use? Thing is, never use other wood turners' speed to determine what speed you should be turning yours at. For a couple of reasons. One is your log won't be the same as theirs so as you can see this is off balance someone may have similar size laburnum but the off balance is somewhere else or it may not be off balance and they can run it at a higher speed so I, I think best thing to do is always start your lathe at the lowest speed possible and if your lowest speed is let's say 500 you need to always be ready to turn off the lathe as soon as you turn it on because uh, your lathe gonna be rocking all over the place so mine starts at 140 and I can take the pulley down and it starts at uh, 95 but I'll always start any piece at 140 and I take the speed up to until where, where the lathe is a little bit vibrating and then I take it back a little bit so there's no vibration that's what you should do on all your turnings no matter a big piece or small piece always do that get it into your habit of turning and I think that will help you a lot so you don't need to know my speed or someone else's speed to do your own turning just wanted to get that clear I, I did explain to that guy exactly this but for the reference on the video some of you may may find it useful okay 
So check if it's not hitting, then start it. That's 140. Four seventy five hundred. Okay, it starts to vibrate a little bit. So I'm going to take it back down a little bit. Five hundred and seven RPM. So that's that's the max I can turn at this stage it's a bit off balance the lathe does an error so but it's nothing so that's the speed i'm gonna take but that's not the speed you should turn all the time so when you turn some of it off you you take it a little bit higher the higher the speed the better finish and cuts you're gonna get on the piece so always try but go to the speed you're comfortable with. Don't go to the speed you're like scared of turning. Okay, I've sanded this. We're gonna apply Yorkshire grit. By the way, this wood's not wet. <laughs> it seemed like it. Just the outer bark was wet, and it's sanded just like a dry, dry piece of wood. So I'm very happy. I thought I didn't wait two years. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Oh, yeah, by the way, I need <laughs> a moisture meter. <laughs> I did have one but it broke down so that's why I couldn't check moisture content Ooh, yeah. 
it's nice and smooth. Thing is, guys, I can't get good spot here. As you can see, the camera is here in front of me, and basically, you'd have to ride the bevel to get a good cut. That's why I'm having a difficult cut because I'm doing it from here, trying to get a bevel, and you can't. You gotta bend over the lathe and have it right the bevel. I try my best. <laughs> Camera gets in the way, but I want you guys to see as well. You see, when the when the tool is this way, it makes better cut. When it's this way, it scrapes. By the way, I was cutting like this at the 45 nut flat. That way you get a better finish, you know. Um, I think that's, that's basically it. Nice uh, natural edge to it. But this won't be like for food. It's as a decoration you'd have like uh, wooden fruits in there and as a decorative piece because these dust are poisonous and although the wood itself once it's finished you know it's not it's not harmful but it's better to be cautious you know uh, and not risk you never know people might have allergies or whatever you know it's best to be safe and sorry I guess
there we go guys such a lovely wood very dense though um, I bet if I were to use the bowl gouge for all of the hollowing I would have been here at least an hour more so yeah that hook tool definitely helped I'm keeping uh, the tenon I've concaved it before uh, I've mounted it so that when it's on a flat spot it sits nicely there's no no wobbleness to it and this actually was a um, I think I mentioned it before but this was actually dry this part is part of the fungus that uh, darkened it and so it's like three colors now <laughs> I prefer this color than that but it's all the beauty of the wood so never complain thank you everyone for watching I hope you like it and I'll see you all on the next video.